Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it's the first time you're visiting. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you have not already guessed by the title, today I'm going to be doing my most complimented fragrances in my collection. Now I haven't done one of these videos in a while so I thought it would be fun to do an updated version of the fragrances that have been giving me the most compliments recently. So if you like the sound of that then please do keep on watching. And one thing I would like to mention is just because these fragrances get the most compliments it doesn't necessarily mean that they are my favourite fragrances within my collection. And whilst it is really nice to get compliments I don't necessarily pick what fragrance I'm going to wear with that intention in mind. So without further ado let's get started on the list. So the first fragrance on my list is by YSL and it is the new Libre, which is Libre Le Parfum and it is the newest flanker within the collection and my personal favourite. Now, the reason why I think Libre Le Parfum gets so many compliments is because it's been made to be pretty mass appealing, but in a great way. Orange Blossom is such a popular note at the moment and you'll see it in a lot of designer fragrances and for good reason. It's a beautiful kind of sweet white floral. I feel like a lot of people like Orange Blossom. I don't see many people saying that they don't like that note. Whereas white florals like Jasmine and Tuberose seem to be a little bit more hit or miss. And YSL Libre Lee has some beautiful additional notes such as honey and saffron which makes this fragrance a little bit more complex and more unique in my opinion. The lavender is more dialed down than the other fragrances within the Libre lineup. And to be honest, I feel like the whole range of Libre gets quite a lot of compliments in general. That's what I hear out there in other reviews. I only own this one in particular, and this one definitely garners those compliments. I feel like it's a very versatile fragrance. Like I would wear this for any occasion. It's chic, it's timeless, and I feel like in 30 years time this will be such a brilliant, brilliant classic perfume that's still on the market. So yeah, the first fragrance that gets me so many compliments, and I would say actually more from men, is Libre Le Parfum. The next fragrance is by Floricu, and it is One Umbrella for Two. And this is absolutely hands down one of my favourite fragrances in my collection. So it makes me very happy that this also gets the compliments. And I think why this is so likeable is it does have this kind of almost bakery scent to it. And I have likened this before to smelling like a fresh out of the oven pie that has lots of gooey red and blackberries in it. Some people say it smells a little bit like blueberry muffin, whereas to me it's more like a dark and oozy red berry pie with a flaky buttery crust. Oh, I just think it's so, so delicious. In the opening, you do get a powerful waft of like a musky rice note. However, the berries become a lot more prominent in the dry down. They're very prominent in the opening too and they smell like they've been caramelized. So think about those red and dark berries that are being cooked down either in the pie or in another way, and they've been cooked down and simmered and they've gone gooey, syrupy, and a little bit caramelized. I think it's absolutely gorgeous to be quite honest with you. Yeah, I had to mention one umbrella for two because it personally gets me lots of compliments. I like to compliment myself when I'm wearing it too. The sillage is incredible, honestly. I smell this all around me when I'm wearing it. But I did want to add a second fragrance that smells very similar to One Umbrella for Two. Whilst I have only just got it in my collection, because to me they smell very similar, I'm pretty sure that this one will also get lots of compliments. It's already got compliments from my fiance. He really, really enjoys this fragrance. So I'm going to mention that one now. So the next one is by EBK and it is Deep and Desire Yacht. And like I said, this is very new to my collection. So many of you recommended that I try this one, especially after I had mentioned that I loved Florieku One Umbrella for Two. And another thing is many of you said that you actually preferred this one. So let me give you my comparisons, just so you know where I stand on the two. Now in the dry down, they are extremely similar. I would say actually that Deep and Desire Yacht is a little sweeter. 
In the opening, you don't get that initial blast of like that musky rice that you get in one umbrella for two. Instead, you get more of a tea kind of vibe. I would say this is more sweet and prominent in those fruity notes. And whilst one umbrella for two is also very sweet, very gooey, as I mentioned, this one just edges it a little bit more in terms of being more prominent within those fruity notes. It has black grapes in the scent profile and it does almost smell like sour grape sweets. So I went to Tokyo in December and they do a lot of grape flavored sweets and drinks and it's exactly what I'm getting from this composition. However, I would say these are at least 95% similar to my nose anyway. I tested them side by side on the hand yesterday. So I just wanted to mention this as a second option because you might already have it in your collection. Now, EBK is a lot harder to get your hands on. I will pop the details below on how you get in touch with them. You can either order through their social media channels or through their email address. They will then send you a price list or an invoice and the shipping is super quick. So this got to me in about three days, very, very quick shipping. But yeah, I just wanted to mention this as a second option because I finally have my hands on it and I absolutely adore it. The next fragrance shocked me a little bit, not because I don't think it's an incredible fragrance, because I really do. It's one of my favorites currently in my collection. However, I didn't necessarily think that it would be a massive compliment getter. Well, it is, and it is by Soradora, and it is Orchidée Rouge. And this is an extremely likable fragrance. I think because in essence, it's a slightly boozy, vanillic, musky scent with caramel and with rum. So I do think this is quite a mass appealing niche fragrance. I feel like it's also the safest option from Soradora. And anyone that's come around my house and smelt my collection, they are drawn to this one. And I think I've mentioned it before, but my best friend absolutely loves Soradora. It's her favorite niche brand in my collection. And she's obsessed with Orchidée Rouge. But apart from that, and apart from my friends, this is also a fragrance that gets so many compliments whenever I wear it. And it makes me really happy because it is a gourmand vanilla, but it's a more soft gourmand. It's not too in your face and it is not overwhelming at all. It is oh, it's so delicious. Very vanillic. And then you get the musk, you get the almond, you get the rum coming through. Let me just spray a bit in the air. Oh, I just really, really love this one. It gives me a very soft vanillic cake. You get the citruses cut through. So it does have bergamot in there, but it can pull a little bit like lemony. There's a teeny bit of cinnamon too, but it is a kind of creamy, lactonic almond with vanilla with rum just tastes like a gorgeous i want to say more like an almond milk smoothie with a shot of rum in there which i know doesn't make sense i wouldn't necessarily say it smells like a rum cocktail it's the other way around it's like an almond drink with a little bit of rum vanilla oh i love this one it starts to become a little bit more caramelized on the skin. So when it dries down, it's this ooey, goozy, caramelized almond vanilla scent. A little bit of cinnamon, like I said, is coming through. And then you also have the rum. It's not overbearing in any way. It's just the perfect lighter gourmand fragrance. And yeah, it gets the compliments. So I had to mention Orchidée Rouge by Soradora. Highly recommend you getting the Soradora Discovery Kit if you haven't tried the brand already because they have some real smash hits within their collection. I haven't mentioned this next fragrance on my channel for quite some time but it is definitely one of my favorites it gets so many compliments but i also compliment people when they wear it because i find this one truly addictive and it is by killian and it is called back to black and this is one that's actually in my partner's collection although i steal it all the time but he purchased this one after we went on a sniffing day to harrods we both bought a different killian fragrance i bought angel share and he bought back to black and the honey note in here really gets me and i know some people are not big fans of honey notes i am one of those who absolutely adore it and it is so, so prominent. 
Think of it like a Manuka honey. It's a very luxurious, high-end honey, and you are gonna smell so sweet and so tasty, which is why I think I get so many compliments when I wear this. And whenever James wears it, it honestly makes my eyes roll into the back of my head. I love it that much. I mostly get honey, tobacco, saffron cherry. It's a little bit woody. Very sweet, very, very sweet, but with lots of depth. Let me spray this one in the air too, because it is a very complex fragrance with tons of notes in it. Oh, that sprayed a bit funny then. Oh, yeah, the tobacco is coming through, cutting through that sweetness of the honey, which I feel like is very much needed. And then you have this beautiful kind of oak note that gives it a really nice woody vibe. I get some beautiful kind of spices. I think there's nutmeg, there might be cinnamon in there too. A little bit of cardamom. And then you're almost getting this resinous amber and tonka bean. My camera just got cut off, but I'm just gonna keep rolling from where I was. And I was just saying, I absolutely love it. However, we're not talking about fragrances that I love. We're talking about what gets the most compliments. So I just think it's so nice that I absolutely love this, but it also gets so many compliments. I think Back to Black is so underrated. I hardly see anyone talking about it anymore. I think potentially the honey note, like I said, could be overpowering for some people. But if you like the sound of the notes I described and you really like a sticky honey gourmand fragrance with a little bit of depth from the tobacco, the spices, then I'd highly recommend sampling Back to Black by Killian. It is definitely unisex, but I feel like anyone could wear this. And it is actually called Back to Black Aphrodisiac. And I completely get that aphrodisiac vibe because whenever I smell it on someone, I am so drawn to them. So... Yeah, this is a good one. And if you love a compliment, then I highly recommend you trying this one out. The next fragrance has to be mentioned within this list and it is by Une Night Nomad and it is Jardins de Mitzvah. And I think you can see how well loved this one is in my collection. But even though I love this one so much, what makes me really happy is how many compliments it gets to. I'm not gonna stick on this fragrance for too long because I think I've talked about it in at least five videos over the last couple of months. So I don't want you to get sick of me explaining how much I love Jardins de Mitzvah, but it is the most perfect, beautiful, sticky date and rose fragrance. Oh, I think it is incredible, especially for the price point. The date note is super, super prominent. It is so dark, deep and sticky. And then the rose note really cuts through and gives it this beautiful, sexy, feminine edge. You then have almond and saffron, which are two of my favorite notes, and it makes this super luxurious and very unique. And then you have nutmeg and cardamom in the top. If I could pick some of my favorite notes to put in a fragrance, these would be it. I think this is so luxurious. And in the niche realm, this is such a good price point. I've mentioned it so many times, but you can buy Jardins de Mitzvah in multiple sizes. This is a 100 ml. You can also get a 50 ml bottle. You can get a 25 ml bottle. You can get a 10 ml bottle. You can get a 2.5 ml sample. So it can reach any price point if you do wanna try anything from this brand. I would highly recommend getting their discovery kit too. But I have to say, Jardins de Mitzvah is my baby. And if you like fragrances similar to me, then you're probably going to like this one. But I think the reason why this is so likable and the reason this gets so many compliments is because it's a really deep, sweet and sticky, jammy rose and date fragrance. I feel like it is mass appealing in a way, although it is completely unique at the same time. Maybe it's just how it pulls on my particular skin chemistry. So yeah, I just had to touch on my baby Jardins de Mitzvah. The next fragrance is an absolute powerhouse. It's definitely one of the strongest fragrances in my collection. And people are definitely going to smell you before they see you if you walk into a room. And it is by Kerosene and it is called Sweetly Known. And I haven't mentioned this in a few videos now, but I find this one so intoxicating. Every time I smell it, I'm just blown away by how incredible it is. Yeah. 
This is so, so, so good. However, it is very potent. So spray lightly because it is gonna be overwhelming if you do more than five sprays, in my opinion. This is a two spray max for me. The first time I ever wore it, I think I must've done at least five or six sprays. I walked into my local post office and it had one of those like glass or plastic screens up. So between me and the lady working at the post office. And when I walked in, she was like, wow, you smell incredible. What is that? And my first reaction is you can smell me through the barrier. And she was like, yeah, it's super strong. So I was like, okay, I think I've oversprayed a little bit here because I can't believe she can smell this. So unless you wanna be smelt by an entire room, which I'm sure some of you do, then be cautious. Anyway, let's get on to scent. So to me, this is like you're cooking down caramel sauce. It's got cardamom in there, but it's got this beautiful kind of smoky burnt smell to it, which probably doesn't sound that appealing. It has a burnt match note in here. And to me, it's like a caramel that's almost turned and it's gone a little bit burnt, but in the best way possible. I think that smell is incredible. Or you're baking some kind of like caramel cookie or gingerbread cookie. And you know when you're baking and it gets slightly a little bit overcooked, which I personally like, I love that crispy crunch. That is the vibe I'm getting from this. It also has notes of cacao, sugar, vanilla, and musk. But to me, it smells like you are baking the most gorgeous and luxurious sweet or dessert. If I was wanting to pick a gourmand fragrance from my collection that I know is gonna get me compliments, then this is the one I would reach for for sure, because almost guaranteed compliments wearing this one. And the next fragrance I wanna discuss is none other than Delina by Parfum de Mali. And I know people are probably sick of everyone hyping this fragrance up, but this is another fragrance that guarantees me compliments when I wear it. And luckily I also absolutely love this one. Delina is an absolute classic and I feel like it is hyped up for good reason, especially if you like a really sweet rose based fragrance. This has been duped by so many brands now and I can see why people would be sick of this scent profile. However, for me, nothing can beat the OG Delina. I just love the scent profile so, so much. And I just love the tartness from the rhubarb and the lychee, which I know some people don't enjoy, but for me personally, I love those two notes. I think it makes it stand out on my skin and last absolutely hours and hours. But this is definitely a floral fragrance, mostly rose, but it also has patalia and peony. It's musky, it's vanillic, it's tart, but front stage and center is definitely the lychee, the rhubarb, the rose, and the peony. I think it is gorgeous. It's gonna be a classic. I'm gonna have it in my collection for many, many years. And this just gets the compliments, especially from men. And my theory personally, and it's what I notice on myself, is men seem to gravitate towards very sweet floral fragrances on women. Just my experience, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts too, but it's ultra feminine. I can see why this is picked often as a bridal scent too. And I think Delina is just absolutely gorgeous. So I had to include it in this list because I'm being honest with you on what fragrances get me the most compliments in my collection. That was all of the fragrances that I wanted to discuss with you today. Of course, there are many other fragrances in my collection that also gets compliments, but I rounded up the ones that have given me the most compliments in the last few months. What I wanna know though, are what fragrances in your collection give you the most compliments? I would really love to know. I always find out the best recommendations from you all. I go out of my way to research them, purchase samples, and sometimes also blind buy, which I know I shouldn't do, but please do let me know what fragrances in your collection get you the most compliments. Thank you for joining me today. It's been a pleasure as always. Please consider subscribing to this channel if you like the content, give it a thumbs up, and you could also follow me over on Instagram if you wanna see more fragrance content. I'll pop my handle on the screen. I hope to see you all in a video to come. Thank you so much and goodbye.